So, today's movie is Internal Affairs, which uh, seems vaguely familiar, but that's probably because I have seen the actor many times before. I don't go over my way to see other films from single actor, but obviously, occasionally I come down to watch the other films. It's uh, really kind of annoying because, of course, one has preconceptions about them, as one could see. In this case, I've seen Gear in uh, in Hachiko, which is a uh, heartwarming story. Uh, Tragic, but I had one. And uh, what, what was the other one again? Uh, yeah, Chicago, which is. I mean, both of them must be really different from this one, I suppose. Uh, this is some some kind of crime thriller. And uh, yeah, so as usual, preconceptions are. I did actually watch once something about a, a film about financial fraud if I remember correctly I suppose that that comes closest to this in terms of the genre but uh, I guess one just needs to try to really not prejudice uh, any other films from the same actors it's kind of hopeless in the end, isn't it? Uh, there's always going to be the same actors. The, the only medium that doesn't have the same actors, that could have the same voice actors, except, you know, voice actors make much less difference. Yeah, the only medium would be animation, where everything is unique. You, know, you can have the same directors, same animators, but it the the end result would still look different. Movies on the other hand are often sort of similar. I mean you know, then they they just depend on the narrative, obviously. Whether that's similar or not just depends on whatever the well, mainly the director wants to do with it, I guess. Anyway. One thing I do know is that I have no idea who Mike Figgis is. I've never even heard of the name of Figgis at all, ever. Oh, and uh, that small TV, I I don't think I've ever seen a small TV. It's, it's almost c- cute if it wasn't followed by whatever it's followed by. It's, it's the size of a can. Hmm, I, I didn't even know they made it that small. This was done in 94, so I don't think size is fixed to any time period. So, one thing I notice uh, any, that is present in this film, and is or is not present in real life, in uh, various jurisdictions, I assume, is is the fact that the the investigators of possible corruption are somehow exempt from conflict of interest rules apparently which is absurd i suppose i mean you know just the whole thing you know otherwise might as well get you know the other watchers to watch the watchers that watch the watchers yeah? uh, well. I don't know why someone who says that they've had enough of someone else would later on defend them. I'm certainly rooting for Van spinning now. Incidentally, that uh, computer that's uh, shown at nearly the, fifth, uh, the half an hour mark 
is quite interesting. It's um, some sort of command line interface. Not entirely really sure what it is. This was 94, so I think the earlier versions of Windows existed, even the earlier versions of Apple, so. Um, There are a couple of actors who look remarkably similar. It might be their haircut, perhaps. I think the only thing that uh, tells them about is their eye color, perhaps. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's. Uh, and they seemingly want to give each other deals, or at least one of them does to the other, and. Uh, and that's only because they knew each other in their academy, which is really corrupt in itself. I mean, the the, 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 the the kind of deal is what happens at times with underlings and such, but uh, so I suppose in a way it's not... It's, it's a way to get to someone else, but... Hmm... Not really sure, I suppose. <laughs> then again, I happen to think the, uh, the one that was given the deal is actually more corrupt than the other one. Or, not even just corrupt, but simply more of a villain than the other one. If in, uh, in other issues and such. Um, well, Gear's character so far seems to be... Mm, not entirely sure. Of course, the one who is clearly too emotional as well is some sort of i.e. AD chief who has a emotional outburst and it's absurd considering they're supposed to well the other one said that there was no case and so maybe there isn't really but uh, clearly one doesn't really convince about that while having some sort of outburst. And yeah, back then they used pagers. I suppose they could still, still functional, but these days, I suppose smartphones are more accessible and emails could be also exchanged instead of just beeps. I'm not even sure if SMSs are allowed. Is that on the same network? No idea. Uh, yeah, at one point, this, this one is called a family guy, apparently. But guess character, uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of like calling a, um, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but maybe uh, it's kind of like calling a, a murder a, uh, a knife man or something, you know, just, I mean, that's going a bit further on, but still, I mean, you know, it's a euphemism at best, and it's not really a euphemism, so euphemism usually has some truth in it. So, what's kind of funny is that this shows cops are the most corrupt and violent. Except, in real life, often, they're even worse, in a way. I mean, in real life you don't get to see them act it all out like this, obviously. Unless a movie is made out of the act of some act. 
this is fictional, I assume, but just based on the accounts, it can be read at times. It's it's worse than this, and this is this is pretty bad already. But yeah. this is kind of why I don't really like this kind of genre. Uh, the I mean, it's one thing for other sides, sort of villains to do whatever, or in horror films. You know, you know, you, you can get either supernatural demons or, or possessed humans or or even serial killers. It's so for them it's kind of given it's sort of in their definition. Of course when the definition turns around I mean, it's supposed to be about Justice and such, it just um, does a sort of block that uh, it does make it worse, and it is worse in real life when this sort of thing happens. In comparison, court drama, which usually follows after uh, the, the sort of roles are that do anything, I mean, ideally in real life, without resorting to the worst sort of vigilantism. Yeah, quite drama in comparison is quite tame. I mean, you know, unless evidence of stuff is presented in the worst, the worst kinds, uh, but still tame. Otherwise, besides pictures or such, but otherwise, it's um, it's just a discussion as opposed to. But anyway, with regards to this movie, uh, one tries to understand the reason for some things. And it the, the, one doesn't necessarily come to any conclusion, any any, any realization of why some things happen. There, there might be more at the end later on, but mm, not incredibly likely, unless uh, but that could be, but uh, likely not. And yet. It's not very understandable why some things happen. I mean, things of a of an instinctual sort of nature, I suppose, more understandable. But if it's about hmm, I'm not entirely sure. This uh, movie, though, introduces characters uh, abruptly and uh, then seemingly expects. Uh, viewers to somehow feel anything in intense moments and that's not exactly ideal for any movie at one point they seem to use silence for some reason like um, in a two person conversation only one person can be heard or um, well, within the film as in, the other person is only speaking when the view is from outside. So I guess that's a, it's a, a way to perceive a situation. I'm not exactly sure how people are supposed to perceive it. Uh, uh, anyway. There was, the re there was a restaurant at one point with some plants, actually many plants, and uh, a brick wall for some reason. I'm not sure it's trying to say with such decor. They are probably somewhat like real life. There is no one who is not a demon, I guess. Yeah, uh, there, is, there is seriously no one who isn't a single character <laughs> who isn't. I mean, Gary's character is, is a far cry from uh, Hachiko's character, but that's that's an entirely different story, obviously. Just the, the, these these uh, movies don't really tend to depict us. Well, I suppose it's it's slightly more complex to have everyone to be negative rather than to have just a single, I guess, positive sort of protagonist and such. 
another problem with what and how Hollywood, I assume this is a Hollywood film, seems to operate is the fact that uh, sex is everywhere with, with, with nearly every single one of the movies, but it's so all pervasive that one really has trouble just keeping tabs, really, and it's kind of ridiculous, uh, not just kind of, and, uh, and the way that people react then to each other and to other, I mean, the whole thing is over the top, uh, I'm not sure if it is realistic or not, it's, uh, it's quite a thing, so it's, uh, it's, uh, I guess, it's kind of funny, right, because in, in, in a rom-com, uh, that would be sort of a staple, except this isn't a rom-com, of course, uh, and yet they still use it, in a sense, and in a way, it isn't funny, but it's funny because it's, it's, uh, they share such a staple, and yet they're such distinct genres. So, another thing with regards to real life is that, um, in the movie, that they seem to have a lot of trouble to really come down on a single corrupt cop, uh, mostly a single one anyway. And now, in real life, it often happens, seems to happen, that uh, there isn't even anyone, there, are, there aren't even, I mean, there are, there are watchers that will watch cops, you know, but uh, either they're ineffective or worse, they're, uh, they're corrupt themselves. And that that often seems to be the case. So, if if it's so problematic to even get a single cop, cop down legally, then how much more difficult is it to overcome the systems that are corrupt inherently? Even even the watchers are corrupt. By the way, I like the atmospheric uh, music at the end. Uh, it's almost uh, industrial, almost sounds like industrial sounds coming together to create this eerie, dark atmosphere. Now, considering all the worlds ever in existence, I do not suppose that uh, Yuppie is really the worst of them all, really. It's, it's, so, you know, it's just, it's a bit over the top. And, uh, yeah, by the way, this is a 1990 uh, movie, not 1994. Uh, I was confused with uh, when it was originally broadcast on this channel. But, yeah, um, so apparently it was directed by the same person as the musician. Now, it's it's not exactly the most coherent film, or even the most logical, or in terms of... Um, well, obviously, they intended it to be some sort of action film, but it um, makes a little sense, and uh, yeah, I'm assuming the real internal affairs division uh, by far does not have such so much action. So I'd say this director was better as a musician. Uh, I like the music better than I like the whole story. Really, it's uh, it's quite a convoluted story, and there's just unnecessary violence. We really, a lot of it, a whole load, uh, a lot of unsolved uh, knots and such, and um, it doesn't feel incredibly. Um, Satisfactory. The elements of these sort of films are supposed to be satisfactory or not, but uh, um, I'm just just say it, it, it. It's not very logical. It's not that I watch films for the logic, but uh, it's. Um, I suppose as a crime thriller works, but it still needs a sort of sense. Like one could say, Psycho was a crime thriller, but it had meaning behind it. It had a story. It had a background. I mean this. Gary's character barely had any past at all, so what's the, what's the point, really? And um, a, a lot of them reacted unnecessarily and over the top to various things and such. Oh so, yeah, well, at any rate, and then this is the, this then. Maybe next time I'll watch something softer. 
end with meaning uh, meaningful films are the best really.